Let's get nice and, uh... Yeah. Alright, bitches. It's on. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Love in the time of cholera. The first time I laid eyes on our 25th president was on a family vacation during my 14th spring. I was walking against a murky, dull morning, alone, my heart heavy with angst. Waves jumped pointlessly into the sand. Kelp piles collapsed under the weight of rot. Dumb fuck dogs yapped at seagulls up the beach as their owners talked perhaps about fishing or glazed ham. <laughs> I plotted, moped, and decided at length to leave the beach and conclude my stroll on the tract of banality that composed the township overlooking this stretch of coastline. I made my way towards an antique joint that solemnly announced Bernard's in lavender letters over the entrance. A dead-eyed mechanical pony smiled through rust beneath one of the windows. Inside the plexiglass door were piles and piles of the stupidest bullshit I'd ever seen. <laughs> Dog lamps, tapestries of poorly stitched whales cresting over proclamations that God loves you. Glass eagles keeping a watchful eye over, over WrestleMania lighters. A sweaty 30-something glanced at me from behind the counter as I entered and then backed down at a wrinkled magazine. I sniffed at the ageless stink of the place, the stuff, wet, stuffy, wet air heavy with plastic and old fabric odors. The, the stink, I thought. The horrible stank. <laughs> as I maneuvered through the filth to a wall of postcards. <laughs> Bizarrely, there was a section of cards reserved for portraits of the presidents. Clinton and Kennedy gave knowing smirks as Taft struggled to keep his body within the frame. As I scanned the wall of dead men, one of them attracted my singular attention. A chubby, aging Irishman with a tuft of greasy brown hair slicked across his scalp. Cleft chin, anchoring a decidedly bemused expression leered at me with impish eyes beneath bushy salt and pepper eyebrows. <laughs> I leaned over and examined the bold black type stretching across the bottom of the postcard. President William McKinley. My heart grew three sizes too big that day, attempting to supply the fire that was suddenly stoked in my loins. I yelped and threw my hand over my crotch, stumbling out of the store as my head filled with visions of my impossibly seductive discovery. <laughs> It would seem that my passions for the president would go unrequited by virtue of the fact that he had been dead for more than a century. The problem, however, was one that I did not have to spend a great deal of time working out. The answer was simple. For the next decade, I awoke every morning thinking of the machine that must be built to take me into the past. And every time I thought of the machine, I thought of the president. My passions were honed in infernal labor, my every waking moment given to my one purpose, to build the time machine. <laughs> I slaved at the machine endlessly, and at the end of one final night of adjustment, my ambitions were realized. The fruit of my labor stood before me. I slowly typed September 5th, 1901, 6 a.m. into its data pad, nearly a week before William was assassinated outside of Buffalo. I carefully adjusted my hair and clothes before I stepped into my creation. I arrived soundlessly in McKinley's chambers just, at dawn, just as dawn was melting through the White House windows. I stepped out of the machine and could barely see McKinley under covers across the room, deep in slumber. The vision of my love in the flesh made me faint, but I quickly steadied myself and resolved to wait until he woke naturally. I stared at him for what seemed like an eternity. There was a chill in the room and I shivered uncontrollably, bumping into a desk shadowed by the early light. McKinley woke immediately at the noise and the two of us stared at each other. Neither spoke. He wore an inquisitive expression and scanned the entirety of my appearance. I can handle this right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Keep going! <laughs> Finally, he uttered the words, Who are you? I continued staring, my heart beating at an alarming rate. After a moment of hesitation, I, I simply stated, I love you. McKinley <laughs> threw the covers off of his body and stomped across the room, his voice growing louder as he inquired, Who are you and what the hell are you doing here? He stopped a few feet in front of me and I looked at him calmly. I'm from the future and I love you. <laughs> I, th I thought that McKinley was going to fly off the handle, and indeed for a moment it seemed as though he would. As we, as we stared at each other once more, a smile slowly crept across his tired face. You know, he said, the only thing we have to love is love itself. McKinley reached out and grabbed my shoulder with his right hand and began unlacing his trousers with his left. <laughs> Today is a day which will live in infamy, he told me. A single joyful tear rolled down my cheek as I knelt to the floor in front of him. Oh my god, the last line! <laughs> so I had only read the last line and now I know what it means. 